We are live from the content room of Brad Kamikaze Franklin. Make sure that you go and like and subscribe to the YouTube page right now. We've got a lot of great content, a lot of great interviews coming up, of course. And uh, we really appreciate those of you that have already subscribed to the page and have been checking out the interviews that uh, we have done previously, man. We had a lot of great guests on the show. Uh, Jackson State University President Thomas Hudson, uh, Jackson Mayor Shokwe Lumumba. We've been talking about medical marijuana. We got a lot of great things we're gonna be talking about on this channel. So make sure that you uh, like and subscribe and turn on those notifications, all right? We are coming to you live from the content room in Synergy 2 at 5290 Galaxy Drive, which is right behind the Synergy link, of course. And if you are an aspiring podcaster, if you're a content creator, if you're creative, uh, you have a podcast or uh, you want to do uh, your YouTube show, just like we're doing from right here in the content room, make sure you give us a call at 769-257-6664. And you can rent some time in the content room, of course. We're also brought to you by the Kundi Collection. And of course, as always, when I come on, I'm going to have on some Kundi Collection gear. So make sure you go to www.kundi collective.com got a lot of different styles man for you to check out man so make sure you go to the website and grab you a t-shirt so uh we got a another fantastic guest on the show today of course and you've seen me talking to this brother before we go way back man but of course he's in town again uh doing some activities for uh, the jsu uh gala that yeah, goes on yeah. uh you know what i'm saying doing his uh, alumni duties as yeah, an illustrious yeah, yeah. alumni of the jackson state university but this is my stupa stowaways brother i wanted to get him back on because uh you know the last time we talked abstract mind state was getting ready to uh to drop a new album that actually dropped the album right. on easy sound but uh, right. a lot of things have gone on since then yeah, so yeah. since he's in town Wanted to get him on, wanted to talk to him real quick, man. If you got a chance to check out the Genius documentary on Netflix, and I'm sure that a lot of you had because a lot of people are talking about it online. Number you one movie in the, in the world. On there Netflix. it is. The number one Netflix show <laughs> in the world right now. So, uh, of course, if you saw that, then you saw this man's face. You saw Old School Ice Green. You saw him from the beginning of the documentary to the end. He yeah. was a huge part of what was going on. He lived all of the stuff that you saw that Kanye was going through. Uh, we're going to talk about that right now, man, because a lot of people out there have got a lot of questions. A lot of people that have seen you in the documentary, man. So we're going to talk about the documentary. We're going to talk mm -hmm. about the book that you mm -hmm. have and the mm -hmm. book tour. And then we'll talk about Abstract Mind State on tour. The yeah, album is yeah. out right now. Make sure that you go get it. So let's talk about this documentary real quick. Uh, you know, people got a chance to get an inside look uh, at Kanye's life from, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the infancy of his career mm -hmm. uh, up until now. Uh, you know, and a lot of people are talking about just the foresight and the wherewithal that Cootie had to begin getting yeah. this footage back at that time. So you were there yes, in those yeah. beginning stages. You yeah. were one of the people that were there with Kanye West. Uh, as Abstract Minds Day was coming through the Chicago hip hop scene. So just kind of mm -hmm. talk about that. Just kind of talk about how your relationship with Kanye started, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, um, shout out to Cootie overall, Cootie and Chike as a team, you know, mm -hmm. um, amazing. But um, I actually met Kanye through Cootie, or because of Cootie, we right. connected, I should say. So that's pretty uh, poetic, you yeah, know, if you look yeah. at it like that. Because yeah. Cootie. Um, just to take it back, just to bring the connection of what, how Cootie connected that dot, then right. talk about, you know, it, it turning into a documentary. But um, Cootie, uh, back in Chicago, you know, we were the group, uh, Abstract Mindset right. at the time was the uh, premier, right. you know, group in the, in the city. Right. And uh, Kanye was trying to uh, make that transition at the time, you right. know, from producer to artist. But really, he was, at that time, he was totally focusing on producing, right. you know. So... Right. While he was doing a photo shoot for the Source magazine, uh, it was a, it was a, it was a, um, what do you call it? Like a, I guess right now they call it a street fashion or streetwear fashion. Right. Um, it was a spot called Crew Sports. Yeah. Crew Sports was these two brothers that, um, and I think they went to school with EP at Whitney Young, if I'm not mistaken. It was these two brothers. They were twins, mm -hmm. and uh, Crew Sports was the was like the premier outlet for all of the fly gear at the time, and um, uh, the Source magazine which Cootie was doing promotions for right. the Source that summer, driving the Source truck. Right. And we had just finished our first album. Had got We was, you know, every, all the focus was on us. And the only person we let get a copy of the album was Cootie because he was, like, just responsible and in a cool position because mm -hmm. all he wanted to do was play it in the Source truck. Right. He was like, you know, Cootie's yeah. attitude was why 
why play all these other artists when I can just play, right, right. you know, abstract right. mind state? So, uh, at this photo shoot, Mecca, uh, if you remember the Mecca, um, the clothing line Mecca, mm -hmm. they were doing a shoot with Kanye. And the music was playing because the source truck was in the background, right. you know, in the backdrop for the shoot. And it kept being abstract mind state songs. Long story short, Kanye kept asking, who is this, who is this? And to Cootie finally pointed over and said, man, that's, that's, that's old school, Lights 3, he's standing right there. Right, right. Kanye walks over to me, and the relationship began from there. Now, fast forward, even before that happened, Cootie already had uh, saw Kanye as a 19-year-old mm -hmm. and, and, and saw how he was moving and heard his production and thought, he was going to be amazing, and Cootie was inspired by Hoop Dreams, Yeah, the movie Hoop Dreams. Right. And he thought, man, this was his Hoop Dreams moment. Like, I see something here. I'm going to start taping him from the moment I believe in him. And that's when the, that's tapes, that's when the tapes started rolling. Right. Now, from the moment that that Mecca situation happened, not even a year later, not even a full year later, Kanye moved to New York. Mm -hmm. Cootie followed him Right. a year later. Right. I came a year after that, and this okay. was right. So Cootie them was there when the, when the towers came down. Mm -hmm. I came immediately after the towers fell. Mm -hmm. And so uh, talk a little bit about how you went from the beginnings of that relationship to right. actually eventually becoming an A and R for good music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The very first A and I like to always say that because that's like a stamp. I can I can claim that right. the very first A and R for good music. But yeah, so what ended up happening was. Um, in the development stages of Kanye um, and I's relationship, mm -hmm. he he literally like like take my you know asked me to take his number you know while we hadn't worked with him before and I was like cuz you're on the rise you know we can't afford you he's like I work how you know I won't work it out right. you know for for a dope nigga he said how you know I won't work out for a dope nigga from the shot you know and I was like all right let's make it happen we switched up from that point on Kanye was like just like he is now and always been he was persistent so he would always check in with me. And then he just literally just asked me, man, can I just hang out with you, you know? And I was like, sure, you know, I'm mm -hmm. about to go to, you know, this event. And he started hanging out with me. So that built our relationship. But that only lasted for about, like I said, about six months. Right. And then he was and then he was gone. And I kind of forgot about it till I got to New York. And Cootie said, man, I told you, yeah, you was out here. And he wanted me to bring you to his crib. I was like, oh. I was like, oh, okay. Um, that's right. He is out here. Like, yeah, let's go. You know, so he was living in Jersey at the time. That apartment in Act One, where you see me when I got the long locks still yeah, and, yeah. The, and the red Afro wear, mm -hmm. long sleeve, and Jay Ivy comes in. I'm like, oh, Jay, you know. Yeah. And at the time, um, and Tari and Jay is on the college dropout. Mm -hmm. and, the re and that happened because um, soon as Tyree walked in, because if you notice when Tyree said, oh, where, where, you know, she didn't even know Kanye. She's like, oh, Kanye, where? Hey, how you doing? You yeah. know. And I right away I was like, yo, this girl got vocals and blah blah blah. And I was almost like pretty much setting the pace for for A and R work right then and not right. even realizing right. you know, I'm putting people on the on the I put people on yeah, I'm yeah, making it yeah, for the yeah. college dropout. I'm yeah. putting stuff together and just in the spirit and the yeah. love of the music. Yeah. So as we were in New York and we were um I started going with him the same way he would hang out with me in Chicago. Now I'm hanging out with him because he's the like the premier up and coming producer. Right. I'm going to sessions with him. And one session that really changed everything for us specifically was uh it was doing one of the college dropout sessions. It was for the song um uh with most uh uh most deaf, him most deaf and freeway, uh two words. Two words, yeah. Two words. Yeah. And um Originally, um, the I know the Harlem the Harlem City Boys Choir is what who ultimately end up on there. Mm -hmm. But you know, in the spirit of how Kanye works, he constantly changes and changes. Well, it started off with Hezekiah Walker's choir. Okay, and he was in the studio, and at the time, at the time, Kanye wasn't as savvy trying to verbalize what he was looking for. And he he's pushing on the he's like no he like pretty much screaming on the choir like no I, no that's not it that, you know? right, right. and I, I would stop him I'd be like hold on yeah. I, I, and I hit the button like, like, look, he asking you all to stack the vocals here. Da, da, da. I'm saying all these professional terms like multi the vocals and do right, all this. Right, 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 and, and he right. just started looking at me like, so we got through that session. And he said, man, I didn't know you knew your way around the studio like that. And I was like, yeah, I live in the studio. He was like, hmm. Once again, I'm just putting a little stars by where I was right, pretty much right. setting up my A&R right. position, not even knowing it myself. Right. And so time goes by. And um, we get, you know, we get the college dropout done, and I run back to do Abstract Mind State. Right. That's when I separate from him. Right. And then maybe a, a album or two later, he puts together this thing called Good Music. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I come back around again because I never really go nowhere. I just go do my thing and come back. Right. And when I came back, it was, here's the pivotal moment in the studio with Big Sean. Big Sean is the new artist. This is after his mom's passed. And um, I was at the, you know, we all was at, were at the funeral. And at the funeral, I saw this kid uh, at the hotel, I should say, in the lobby when we were all just hanging out. This kid was just going crazy, just spitting like a hundred bars. And I was like, who is this dude? Mm. And, and uh, Common had came over to the bar and mm. he was like, man, that's Kanye new artist, his name Big Sean. And I was like, wow. so the funny thing about it is, I fell in love with Big Sean then because he was so dope to me and he was so raw from Detroit. And you know, Detroit yeah. got spitters, right. you right. know? And he, this was before he knew how to devise a song himself. Right. He just had just crazy bars because he was a freestyler, right. he was a battle rapper, right. you know, that, that. so right. this is raw shine. Right. And I was like, oh man, this dude is crazy. And so we get, after the after the uh, funeral and everything, and Kanye get back to work because he never really stopped working. That was mm -hmm. you know, probably one of the things that still suppressed in him. He never really, you know, he just kept going. Well, we in the studio one day and uh, he was trying to get, she was listening to Sean, he was doing some work mm -hmm. and he was getting upset because Sean was just kept bringing him songs. He was talking about the same stuff in every song. Right. And i never forget, Kanye was like, man, he was getting his hair cut. Uh, it, it always vivid in my mind because Ivan, who everybody knows is like a celebrity uh, groomer now. Uh -huh. Ivan had the, uh, the reason I remember because he had the camo uh, smock around uh -huh. his neck and that just stood out to me because I hadn't, at that time I had never saw one like that. Right. And Kanye just went off. He was like, after he played some of his music, he was like, man, Sean, if you don't quit talking about, about um, money, girls, and getting on, man, I'm, you're going to drive me crazy. You got to talk about more than that. You right. know, he just kind of jayed down on him. And I saw Big Sean kind of like, I saw like, a, a, to me, I saw like the life leave out of him because this is idol mm -hmm. screaming on him. And it felt like that same moment back in New York uh, in the studio with Hezekiah Walker's choir where he just didn't really know how to verbalize what he wanted out of him. And once again, I saw it. Mm -hmm. So I followed Sean out. Sean was leaving out the room to go try to do what he's asking. Right, right, and, but he had right. the puppy dog head down right. kind of thing. Right. So I kind of followed behind him and left out. And I said, Sean, I said, man, he said, I said, man, you, you, I, let me tell you what Kanye want, man. I said, man, do you have any songs? Like, I said, how did you meet Kanye? And he was like, I ain't never told you this story on school. I said, no, he told me this really cool story. Right. I said, that's a song. And then I said, uh, and he started telling me about his mom and how she went to school, uh, acting class, Denzel's acting class. Uh -huh. and um, But he, she got pregnant with him and had to uh, uh, take, have, take care of her responsibility. So she had to give up her dream to take care of him because his father was kind of like a Rolling Stone kind of guy. Gotcha. He was just out here doing his thing. Gotcha. I said, man, that's a song. And he said, well, actually, uh, old school, I uh, actually did write a, a verse about that. I never finished it, but I got a verse. I said, let me hear it. And he spit it, and I was blown away. I said, dude, say that verse for Kanye. He's like, okay. for real? I was like, say that verse. Mm -hmm. He goes back in there. Hey, hey, can I spit a verse for you? You know, that, yeah, flat, that little yeah. flat tone he has. Yeah. And Ye was like, all right. And he kicked that verse. He kicked for me. And Ye just went off in a good way. He was like, that's what I'm talking about. Not that, man, you going to, you know, he was just like, yeah, right. Sean, that same life that I saw leave out of him, man, he was Got bigger. He was really right. turned into Big Sean because Sean ain't a big guy at all. Right. And I saw him blow up. And then we walked back out. He was like, man, thanks, old school. You know, and he like proudly went to the other room to record. And I come, I came back in the door. And it was so funny because we was waiting. I, I remember it vividly. We were waiting on some um, some uh, Jamaican, it was some Jamaican food, some jerk chicken came. And we sitting there and Kanye like, I'm kind of like right here. Kanye is sitting kind of like here because he had to look back at me. And he, he, he said, just out the blue, he says, how'd you get Sean to say that verse? Mm. And I looked at him like, like, how you even know I got anything to do with that? But I said, and I cracked the joke with him. I said, the same way I get you to, uh, to, to, to say it where he said, ha, ha. you know, he just kind of laughed. Yeah. And the light bulb went off right then because I just looked at the room. I looked, thought about what happened. Mm. I said, I said, yay. While we was eating, I said, yay. I said, who is the a &R good music? And he was like, nobody, you know. Um, <laughs> the rest. You know, he was like, he said, Consequence said he wanted to... Um, do that. And I, I, I said something sarcastic, being funny, <clears throat> just making a point. I said, Consequence, your artist is about to come out with an album in a couple of weeks. Right. I said, again, yeah, who's, who's the A&R? He said, nobody. I said, that's what I want to do. He was like, I, right. he said, man, holla at G and, um, and Don C at the time. And he was like, uh, we, can make, we can work that out. 
And there it is. Do you know what I mean? I became so, the first and the good. So you were there and you were a part of, you know, a lot of the more controversial elements of that. I mean, you were there from the beginning to the end. So mm -hmm. all of the, the aspects of the documentary, you know, you experienced and you're a part of. So I right. want to talk about, you know, uh, some of the more, more tumultuous times mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, people saw in a documentary. From you being on the inside and looking at it, let's talk about, you know, that moment in the documentary where, you know, Cootie and Kanye had their separation when Kanye blew oh, up. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, and, uh, uh, you yeah. know, Cootie was feeling like there was uh, some distance and some space yeah. between them in that relationship. You were there. Mm -hmm. You were kind of seeing it from uh, uh, an insider's point of view. So talk about that period in time and talk about when you saw Cootie talking about how he felt on his end and you knowing what was going on with Kanye on the other yeah. end. You know, how was that time? That that was a that was a uh, strange time because now Cootie is like I mean not Cootie now Kanye is like working with like Hype Williams and all of these right you know well pretty much I can't even say all of these Hype Williams Kanye right. would really like went from Cootie straight to Hype and right. that's what it was and it was a little tripped out because Cootie was like our guy yeah Cootie was like our Hype Williams in a sense meaning like not that he shot like Hype but. He was our video guy, mm -hmm. and Cootie not being there, it was a little, it was a little, little weird. It was a little yeah. weird. It yeah. was a little weird. But if Ye ran the show, so it wasn't like we can be like, man, you better get Cootie. It wasn't like that. It was because Ye is very like uh, artistically focused, so mm -hmm. how, whatever he on, that's, that's what, what it is, yeah. and we gotta gravitate yeah. around his wishes to help facilitate that. Yeah. So. And on the other side, it was strange because I still hung out with Cootie just right. as much as him. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I never stopped hanging I mean, with so Cootie. So what was that like? What so, was those conversations like? This, this, that's a crazy yeah, dynamic. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. Right. It was more like, man, you know, they were like Cootie. I can be honest and say, yay didn't ask about Cootie as much, but never had nothing to say when he come up. Because we didn't hide none of the gang, none of the crew, none of the fam or the village that we call ourselves. Um... We didn't hide being around Cootie. He'd be like, right. man, we saw Cootie. He'd be like, oh, what's up with Cootie? You know, he would yeah. ask, and you would think, like, like, dude, like, yeah. you know, you asked about Cootie. That's yeah. Cootie. Like, right. call him or check, yeah, check yeah, in yeah. with yeah, him, right. you know? Right. And I was like, and I let him know, like, man, he asked about you. See how you was doing. Oh, man, tell him what's up. But he never mm. would move, you know? And, mm. I, and, I, and I think, you know, the way Kanye is, he's very, um, because of his position, he's very apprehensive to push himself on you if I guess if it, if his mind tells him maybe Cootie ain't feeling me because of what happened, yeah. he's gonna yeah, he's yeah. gonna fall back. Right. And then Cootie the type that is so smiley, happy, good and nice all the time, he it's almost like he don't even hold on to nothing. So it's just like it's actually a perfect it was always a perfect situation for them to be not let that many years go by because they said let something like six to ten years get right. between them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And um and and it was odd, man. It was very it was it was it was never uncomfortable because they both of them always acted the same. Mm -hmm. So I didn't feel strained or right. anything. Right. It was just it, it was no strain, but it was strange. It was strange because it was new new visual people around, you know. And then even when it wasn't Cootie, I mean, even when it wasn't um, hype, just everyday people or daily people he was working with. It was kind of strange to see the new camera guys, and mm -hmm. you know, even mm -hmm. all the way up to the last like. I mean, the last few years, we've been in our own thing, but the years before that, those last few years of the Energy Center and me working there, you know, he had this other camera guy, and I always he always made me think about Cootie. Yeah. But at this point, though, Cootie is like the, the premier documentarian. Yeah. He had done too much stuff right. in, in his own world by right. then, but I always thought about him. So, right. you know, that was a, it was a strange space as friends because mm -hmm. we, were, we were brothers. It, that became a brotherhood, man. We was around each other every day for so long, for so many hours that we, we you know, we all became brothers in that situation. So it was almost like, you know, a, 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 one of our, one of our very close. It was like a brother going away to the, um, to the military right. or something like that. That's right. how that felt. That's the right. best way I can describe it. Yeah. Cootie was like away in the army at war or something. You know, and be, right. at war, he picked up a lot of skills, right. which would be for him the, the 30 for 30 or like the, the Ben Wilson 30 for 30, which became the number one uh, 30 for 30 on um, support mm -hmm. on uh, uh, whatever. 30, who do, who do ESPN. 30? ESPN. Right. That was their number one. You know, everything Cootie them touched became, you know, oh, yeah. they oh, won yeah. the NAACP oh, yeah. award when they did uh, the Dr. King. Dr. King Dr. It's like everything they touched just, right. you know, seemed to. So right. it was like kind of obvious, like, yo, like, look at Cootie out here killing it, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, um, it didn't come together until you remember when you saw um, Act Three, yeah. and I, I like literally like just put them back together. And at that, 
in Act 3, if you could have saw our life during that time, I was bringing everybody back to Kanye at that time because I had just got back with him after I had been separated with him for about five years. Right. And when I came back, I started calling Don C and John Monopoly, and I was trying to bring everybody back. Right. And Cootie was the last one because I had got everybody back around right. or at least back in good speaking mm -hmm. And um and whatever the reasons, it was various different reasons why distance got between. Look, the one thing I can say about the, the the team or the village, nobody ever lost the love. It was still like a really heavy love for the brother. It was like, yeah, he's our brother. We would love him through everything, mm -hmm. but no, that person may not be around. Right. So when I told Kanye that Cootie was in town, and and he said, man, he for whatever reason, he's like, I want to see Cootie. I said, I right, am gonna call you. You know, when mm -hmm. I'm with him. And me and Cootie was hanging out with Deion Cole. We was doing the whole BET thing. Right, and right. if y'all see on, on, on Act 3, he's on the phone, and he sounds like he's trying to guide us to him. Well, that was me he was on the phone with. Okay, and okay. that's when he was like, you see the lights? Yeah. You see the flashing light? He was talking to yeah. me. Because we was like, man, where you at? He was like, you see these lights in there? And we literally did. Yeah. We used to always like, oh, there you are. And we was like a block away, but we right. saw all these lights and stuff. Right. You know, and then that's why when they came in, and that was an emotional scene that had made it to TMZ, which, again, I had never been in the lights like that. But when it's like that, man, you can't see nothing. When mm -hmm. they flash on like that, you don't see anything. But all I could see was us in there. And when they saw each other, and if you see on the tape when they hug, you see Kanye kind of lay his head on them almost like an exhale. Yeah. And if I felt something, and that's when I, we like turned it into like a hug, a th I turned it into like a three way hug. Yeah. I just grabbed both of them. Yeah. I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. Right, I, was, right. I was just so happy to get yeah. the brothers back right, together. Right. You know? So, you know, that, that happens. Let's talk about another pivotal moment uh, in the documentary uh, Kanye's mother passes. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, and. They had a, 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 an excellent relationship, an amazing relationship. Man. A lot of people say that she was his anchor. And from that point, yeah. you know, we begin to see a new Kanye. We mm -hmm. begin to see in Act 3, you know, the Kanye that we know mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, uh, I guess for all intents and purposes was different than we had seen before. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, doing a lot of crazy things in the media, saying a lot of crazy things in the media. Yeah, yeah. You again have a, a bird's eye view and, a, and an up close seat at, at watching this man go from George Bush doesn't care about black people to going to the White House and, you know, having an audience with Donald Trump. All right. these things happening after right. his mom passed. So when you're seeing all this happening and you're seeing your guy that you have known for all of these years mm -hmm. in the White House with Donald Trump uh, saying a lot of things that he's saying, kind of, I guess, in a sense, a lot of people would say kind of spiraling a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what were your thoughts and how did you handle that? You know, um, I, I never was one that agreed with everything he did, but I, it never changed my friendship because I knew him. Right. And that's the, that's the hard part about these celebrities. Like, <clears throat> The person that they become to the public and because they become what I like to call public property, because once you do so much, when I, you know, once you do so much, when you, once you give so much of yourself to the public, you kind of become public property. Mm -hmm. And the way I, I, it was, I, I was able to digest a deal with a lot of that, I would just say, man, this was the trade off for all the success, right. all the financial gains, all of the popularity, all of the, the, the trinkets, the trade off is you're no longer, you don't no longer belong to yourself. Right, you belong right. to the people. They get to the say what they right. want. Yeah. They get the, you know, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, and so that's how I was able to deal with it. But being his, being his friend, I don't, I, I, I'll say this. I don't think he knows how hard it is being his friend, how mm. heavy it is on his friends. Yeah. His real brothers that love him is just as heavy on right, us right, because right. You know, the, one of the number one things I can't stand hearing is, man, where's his real friends? Y'all just letting him do the right, right. And we like, you know, it's like it's like offensive because Y'all right there. We like we right here, but right. at the same time, this is he's really a billionaire for real. Yeah. Um he's really the biggest thing since Michael Jackson. And he uh is a grown man who makes all his own decisions. And he can literally control, I don't care how close you are, he can control who gets in the perimeter. Mm -hmm. So when he feels he wants to become outspoken and, you know, he gets uh, boisterous or maybe don't care what he's saying, he knows who to set the perimeter up with because we're going to come with all that what might be at the time 
too goody two shoe and positive that, you don't that he don't even want to hear right now. Right. I feel like snapping. Right. So I can't have Ice Gree around because Ice Gree gonna be like, dog, you gotta, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Or Cootie smile yeah. and gonna be yeah, yeah. That, that energy is gonna, you know, make his Gemini probably just yeah. ah, like yeah, you know. So he sets up that perimeter. Mm -hmm. And what I mean is he makes sure that, you know, when he's doing his thing, you know, he he knows who to have around. So, you know, uh, but seeing him go through that, um, I also, you know, I honestly say a, a lot of the stuff I saw was like kind of like, mm -hmm. uh, I had me like, man, what's going on? You know, I was concerned like like fans or people who supported him or his music or yeah. was into the character that became Kanye West, you know. Yeah. And um, I was the same way, like, oh, man. But except the difference with them and me is like, man, that's my brother. You know, right, like, right. I'm watching this happen to my brother. I, I'm not just, a, I am a supporter. Mm -hmm. I am a fan of the music and, and the shoes and the good, you know, the cool stuff that he was uh, giving the world. So, but I was actually close. Unlike all of them, I'm actually inside knowing that in the same breath, man, he's a good dude. He's a giving dude. He really care about people and you know, all his intentions are good. It's just don't always come out right. So I have to deal with that, mm -hmm. that balance like that. But man, watching him go through that. And one of the things, one of the things I say on record that tripped me out is, is and, I, and it came, I, I'll say, I, I can be reaching, but I'll say this based on my closeness with him. Mm -hmm. I do feel like he became more rebellious when he lost his mom. It, yeah. it kind of, he became like, I don't care. And he became tougher. Yeah. Like he could take a lot. What seems the average artist or human being or person in that position would fold with the level of weight that he was holding. But it's something about that loss of his mom made gave him like this superhuman. Superpowers, yeah, yeah, you know right, what I'm saying? Right, gave him this right. superhuman strength right. to bear anything. And it was wild seeing that too. You know, I learned from that. I would be like, man, like he handled okay, like you can handle that, okay. And so on the the, the, the the Trump thing, I'm not even into politics. Can't stand politics, never yeah. Never subscribe to it. Don't believe in it. Mm -hmm. I really, I really truly feel that's the whole. We ain't gonna get that. That's theater yeah. to me. I got you. So I just stay away from it and let the people who believe in it deal with it. And I don't have nothing to say about that either. Yeah. The funny, the only thing about the Trump thing that tripped me out is he never spoke up for himself um, because um, I mean, not the Trump thing. I'm sorry. I'm saying Trump. So erase that. I didn't mean to say Trump. The um, slavery is a choice. Yeah. Line. He never said slavery was a choice. If people can go look at this as I'm saying this on mm. on this show right now, mm. if they go back because it's still there, he said 400 years. Man, that sounds like a choice. And he was trying to make a point to say if a person, you know, because you know, even even um, even uh, Harriet, I mean, uh, uh, even uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm bugging out. I'm gonna lose all of my black card right now. <laughs> Uh, Underground Railroad. Harriet Tubman. Uh, Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I almost said it. Yeah. Look, um, Harriet Tubman even, in, you know, in her story said, you know, there were slaves who just didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. He was trying to say that. Yeah. And the way he said it, when he said 400 years, man, that sounds like a choice. Mm -hmm. But the headline went up, He's Kanye West said choice. slavery is a choice. Mm -hmm. Now, sounds like. And slavery is a choice. It's two different things. And you being the media mm -hmm. know how powerful that That's switch of words or taking just that sounds like out. Man, he wouldn't even defend it. We literally had a round table with his father. Me, his father, I want to say it was his cousin, Tony Williams. It was uh, maybe uh, Sakaya, which, you know, was his main man that handled all the financial stuff and mm -hmm. helped him with a lot of decisions. It was like a, a, a board of us. Even Tremaine, who's now one of the fashion icons. Now right. we got a lot. It's Tremaine Emery, who has a lot going on with Levi's and all this stuff. But anyway, matter of fact, Kanye wore his Levi's on the GQ cover and it was mm -hmm. the cotton balls on it. Yeah. That's Tremaine. He was a part of it, I think. And um, we were supposed to be this support system for the things you're talking about, mm -hmm. making sure when Ye started to go too far, we're there to pull him back, right. you know. And um, he wouldn't de he wouldn't defend it. He just was like, that's this thing. And, and then like, like we was like, yeah, why don't you tell, like hold a press conference, do something. And just at least say you didn't say slavery was a choice. You right. said 400 years. That sounds, sounds like, like a choice. choice. And you can really make that because that's what you were. I mean, we know what you were trying to say. And he was just like, he just was like, nah. And at that point, we, you know, um, just serious. We joke. We, we're jokingly saying it. But a lot of people like to call Ye a narcissist. But we start saying he was a masochist because he just looks like you like pain. 
You know what I'm saying? You like you just enjoy the punishment. You enjoy, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like yeah. you almost enjoy the punishment. So yeah. the dichotomy or Gemini or whatever you want to call it that that the juxtaposition, the yin and yang, everything that makes him him. It also makes it interesting and hard to be in the middle of it, thinking you can affect it, because everything you think is right, he'll go this way, and when you think it's wrong, he go the other. You know, yeah. it's never the way you think. You know, yeah. uh, you know. So it was just interesting, man, being um, seeing him go through that. It wasn't and like you guys, like I say when I say you guys, the people who actually can start falling for him based on the things he provided. It be you know yeah. you, you feel an intimate relationship with yeah. him based on. Yeah. The things he provided gave the world. Yeah. Um, you know, we felt the same way. It was just like hard for us to see him go through had that. Had to be tough. Yeah, it was yeah, tough. Had you to be know? tough. Yeah, yeah. So let's switch gears here uh, and let's talk about what you got going on. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, switching lanes and you know yeah. what I'm saying and, and and getting new revenue streams. You have a book out. Yeah. You got a yeah. book tour that you own. So yeah, 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 talk yeah. about the book real quick. Talk about what the book is about, how the right. book came about, and you know how folks can. Get the book in our hands. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, um, and I'll say before I get into it, uh, I, the book is called I Refuse to Quit, The Autobiography of a Dreamer. And uh, you can get it on I Refuse to Quit.com. I Refuse to Quit.com. No, right. not spelled any kind of slang, kind of way, straightforward. 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 Yeah. I Refuse to Quit.com. <laughs> and the book is available. I have two versions of the book. I have one, it's a paperback. But, well, I have a paperback, and also people like audio books and um, Kindle and all the various formats on it's available on you know online. You can go through that dot com, or even for for the other versions, you can go through um, what's the one we are we go to every day Amazon. Yeah. You can go through Amazon and, and get those. But the one that's exclusively available to the website to the dot com, I, I refuse to quit dot com, is something I call a dream box. And a dream box has a a hardback limited hardback version of the mm -hmm. book. It's mm -hmm. a different color than the paperback. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, it uh, it comes with a few things, a few like I think I give you a, like a T-shirt, a, a, a tea mug, a bookmark. It's, you know, it's like items in this box, and you know, it's like these soothing colors and these little statements on yeah. it. It's when we got to call it the dream box, and I, so, I brought that up because that's what brought me to Jackson State this um, this weekend because yeah. I'm a part of the uh, Blue Tie Gala, and what uh, Dr. Norwood, uh, acting uh, president, the National Alumni Chapter president. Um, whose term would be ending in July, but mm -hmm. before all this happened, she saw she saw the book, heard what I was doing, loved what Abstract Mind State was about, and invited not only Abstract mm -hmm. Mind State to come here this weekend and perform at the luncheon mm -hmm. that you know before the gala, which was yesterday right. for me. She wanted she uh, had me sitting on a panel for the midwinter uh, conference, and it was just like issues that came through online or topics, I should say, not issues, mm -hmm. topics. And I was part of addressing these topics. Like uh, some some people uh, had questions like, why go to a HBCU? Right. You know, right. because they felt like the um, the PWIs. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, yeah. it's more, you know, yeah. means more. Yes. You know, <laughs> you know, you know yeah. where we're going yeah. with that. Yeah. So yeah. it was questions like that. And she she wanted me on the panel with that. Now the cool part that I got involved with my book was um they they're doing today, they're doing a silent auction for one of my dream boxes. Um, and somebody's gonna receive that. It is two. And then another one of my dream boxes, um, they had a raffle, it's like 30 scholarship recipients, and they did a raffle within the recipients. And one of the one of those, one of those recipients, one of those scholarship recipients will receive a dream box and I get to present it to them. And so. then like we were talking about with the tour. So my goal is to do an HBCU lecture room speaking tour. So I, uh, my book is about I say my book is a movement, and everything I do is a movement of me, and, and I use that in my talk. Off, most people are like what me? That sounds, you know, self-centered and arrogant. But I say I spell me, me, M E I. And if you literally put M E I in in the um, in Google and sound, and, and do the, mm -hmm. the sound out, it says me, M E I, M I E says me. Mm -hmm. That's motivation, inspiration, and education. So I said that's what I'm all about. Mm -hmm. So this tour is about motivating, inspiring, and educating the youth. And I, I made a lecture room tour because like. Like your your listeners and, and, and people watching don't know is you and I had lecture room classes. Yeah. And if you yeah. can remember, uh Kamikaze, we 
That was our best. We loved the, the lecture room. A little fuzzy. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of it is fuzzy. Uh, Shout yeah, out to that. everybody that was in the lecture room with us. <laughs> right. You remember the those lecture calm. rooms? Uh, yeah. Lecture rooms. Not a whole lot of them. We were in there. We were in there. Yeah, we were in there. Yeah, we were in there. But those were the funniest, funniest classes Absolutely. in those lecture rooms. If you, remember, you know, some of the stuff we, we know. about presentation. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Those lecture yes. rooms. Yes. So, I, 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 honestly, those moments we sat in the lecture room is what inspired this tour. Because mm -hmm. I thought I remember how the, the lecture rooms look in the stadium style, the yeah. seating is. Yeah. And also why that mm -hmm. lecture room is special to me is um, specifically in one of my classes, um, Jack the Rapper showed up. And that's how we ended up. And remember, I came running to you telling you yeah. the story. You wasn't in, uh, at school that day. And, um, you know, that lecture room just was a, a place to me where the dots connected. Yeah. So I said, yeah. I want to talk to the kids in the lecture, lecture room, room setting. Yeah. So I came yeah. up with this thing called the lecture rooms, the HBCU lecture yeah. room speaking tour. Yeah. And Dr. Norwood has put me in line with um, the new president of Jackson State, mm -hmm. as well as she made sure I met um, all of the HBC national alumni chapter presidents from all the HBCUs that were there. Yeah. So I can implement this so. to give, you know what I'm saying? So, so that's what I'm working on with the book. So I'm about to take the book to the next level right now. Abstract Mind State is on tour with Slum Village. Right. So let's talk about that real quick. So y'all already done like yeah, we how did many the West shows? Coast led. We did like a, it was seven or nine shows on the West Coast. Right. And so um, y'all are coming up to where next? So we're coming up to May. We're going to Europe, and we're going to so, be in Europe most of the most of the month from the third to the twenty third. Mm -hmm. We'll be in Europe, and then in June it's like a, a Midwest and East Coast dates. And then it's even some in September, and this stuff just is growing and coming online as we go, you know. Yeah. And it's been fun and great touring with Slum Village because those who know Slum Village, their sound and our sound has to be the very close together. Yeah, the, the package. It was, it's, it's like the perfect package because. Yeah. Their audience, man, because <laughs> well, we put it like this: it's a, we did, we fifty years old, and we just not getting the yeah. experience tour. Yeah, and man, the response, man, and that's their crowd. We're yeah. rocking their crowd. We're coming in kind of like the surprise. We're right. the special guests, right. you know. Right. And um, and they don't even build it as like we're the opening act because it's always an opening act at mm -hmm. the venue. Mm -hmm. We're the special guests. Like, part of the tour. Yeah, we're yeah. part of the tour. Right. So, right. um. Man, it's been an experience, you know, and it, it was dope because uh, we haven't lost a step. You know, we we back in the, the rare form yeah. we were known for early yeah. abstract mind state days, and it's been it's right. just been great, and the people received us very well. Yeah, you know, we saw our numbers on Spotify triple. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> over yeah. over the course, touring is a real big part. Of it. Like <laughs> yeah. touring really helps all that. So real quick, you know, you guys being the first artist on Easy Sound, mm -hmm. you know, I want to talk about that real quick yeah. because we talk about a lot of different stuff on this channel. You talk about music, politics, news, popular culture. Right. But, you know, I talk a lot to the younger artists and the independent artists about yeah. being in the game. You guys are on Easy Sound. You yes. have an album that's produced entirely by Kanye West. Yes. And a lot of people would think that, you know, once you get to that, that point, be the easiest it thing in the world, the right? <laughs> uh -huh. Let's talk about it. You do <laughs> the bulk of the work, yep. you know, putting the tour together, all the stuff that is happening for yes. Abstract Mind State. Kanye is actually not he's, even been a part yeah, of any of it. You know, yeah. he's not even a part of the process anymore. So talk right. about, you know, real quick, the being on the easy sound <laughs> and the reality of how much work you have to have to actually put in. Yeah, right? you know what? And this is, I'm going to say this directly to aspiring, upcoming, independent, whatever kind of artist you call yourself that that's always saying, hey, I need some help. Even coming to you. Because yeah. you know, the funny thing about these artists, man, they always think that um, you helping them it's going to be the the, the bridge yes. that Cho totally it's makes the magic pill. No, yeah. It's going like, yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah. oh man, if Kazi, Kazi could just listen to my record and right. give me a shot, it's going to change everything. Right. Nope. It, no, yeah. no, that's, that's not it. Here we are, like you said, reiterating, we have a, a record uh, that Kanye produced the entire record. Mm -hmm. He released us on a platform he created, yep. you know, and we're the only artists on the platform. And and now as the, the world sees it, you and the rest of the world know. Right. Y'all see what you know what Kanye is doing, and he's in his own world dealing with his own personal issues and all that. Mm -hmm. He has nothing to do with any of this stuff that we're doing. You get what I'm saying? Right. So my point in saying that is to say is it's still work. That what? Yeah, that was help. I mean, I did enough with him where I can um, confidently sit here with you and say, 
yeah, I deserve that good look. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that good look. Yeah. We, we, you know, that was deserved. That boost. Yeah, that, that little, little boost. boost. Yeah. I was yeah. deserving of that because right. I put in 22 years with him. Right. And, you know, right. only only working in his best interest. Right. And who can say that they have an <laughs> album produced entirely? Nobody. Not a lot of people can say yeah, that. Yeah, as a matter of fact, outside of his, you know what's funny about it? Not even his album are produced right. fully by him. By him right. Except when you go back to maybe the first couple. Right. The first maybe right. one to three. And right. by the time he got to like eight or eights, is he started uh Jay really brought in that whole idea of um collaborative producing. Yeah. You know, yeah. he'll bring in because you remember when yeah. Timberland and RZA, that, that's a no-no. That didn't right. happen. Right. RZA was gonna do Wu Tang, Timberland was gonna do Missy and whoever else. Mm -hmm. Ye started bringing the big ones together right. for his projects, and right. that became a thing, the collaborative producing. But the only album that has had a full Kanye production uh, slate like that uh, was Commons B. Mm -hmm. B was the last album like that, now R. So that's what is act it's actually in a special place, yeah. you know. Yeah. You know, that whole, you know, only a few had has yeah. had that. And so with that being said, yes, it's a lot of work. And to the inspired artists, it's still a lot of work because the tour, that came from relationships. And that's right. one of the things I spoke right. on on the panel yesterday about right. the HBCU thing when right. they was talking. About, and they was like, what is one of the things that you got from there? I said, man, relationship relationships. Building. It was relationships. Because I said, to this day, like now, I'm on this show. Right. Or this is a relationship that, 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 that allows me to get on here and share these things. Okay, right. yes, yeah, sure, they want to hear this. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to share it because right. of a relationship. A relationship you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And yeah. that's what it's about. You know what I'm saying? So... I didn't necessarily need Kanye. It, it would help if he was if he wasn't going through personal the personal things we've seen him mm -hmm. go through, right. and he was focused on the record the way he was when we were recording it because right. he was going absolutely crazy on right. the record right. when we were recording it. It was right. an exciting time right. to see him that involved and that into it. I was right. almost I felt weird because I couldn't believe he was this excited over our record. But then right. as soon as it came out, it was a, it was a lot going on in his life, gotcha. and it kind of snatched him this way, and then. We dropped, so I had to make it happen. I had to go back in the old school ice green mode yeah. and start picking up the work. You know what I'm saying? But those relationships the work. are really important. And the relationships you know are important. Yeah, so that relationship got us on tour. A mm -hmm. relationship got us the um, the, the write ups. Yeah. A relationship got us um, got us in places or on on a sway in the morning. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. Shout, out, shout, out to, shout out to Kelly Kincaid, shout out another to Kelly. Jackson State. Graduate or everywhere. everywhere. We everywhere. Jay State everywhere. is everywhere. That's we got it. on Sway in the Morning because of a fellow uh, JSU alum. Right. You know what right. I mean? So right. you feel you feel what being, I'm saying? Being so, on the yard, blacked out in, in the lecture <laughs> right, room, right. Uh, not even knowing what's going on. <laughs> not, all of those folks down in important right, positions. Right, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you can party. <laughs> you can and become you successful. Can people. Party, get a degree, and still be <laughs> and still be successful and important in this world. You know what I'm saying? And not even sober most of the time. Right. So you, <laughs> you know what I'm so saying? So the folks that want to get in touch with you, man, give them you know yes, all the social all media. The, handles. Yes, yes, social media handles. I'm on Twitter um, and IG as old school underscore ice green, and my old school is spelled O L S K O O L underscore I-C-E-G-R-E. -E. It's actually a hyphen in between ice and greed, but you can't do that on, right. on social media. Right. So, right. But uh, that's that's it. And on, on um, Facebook, it's just Old School Ice Gree. It's facebook.com slash forward slash Old School Ice Gree all together. Old School Ice Gree, man. Abstract yeah, man. mind state in here, man. You saw him on the Genius documentary, so yes. make sure you go back now after hearing some of this backstory and go check out the documentary. Make sure you get the album. Abstract mind state is available on all streaming platforms yeah. right now. Man, still and... Abstract Mind State in Slum Village coming to a city near you soon yes. on the tour. Hopefully, we can get them in Jackson, Mississippi at some point, man. Yes, yes. But of course, make sure y'all like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Brad Kamikaze Franklin coming to you live from the content room. It's no telling who we can have in here, man. It's no, no telling <laughs> who the guests that we're going to have in here, man. We're going to have politicians. We're going to have artists. We're going to have people in the music business, entertainment, pop culture. We talk about it all right here, man. And if you want to follow the journey, of course, like I said, like and subscribe to the page, man. Like, subscribe. Let's get it cracking, all right? So, uh, you know, for all of us here at the Synergy Link, 5290 Galaxy Drive and the Kundi Compound and the Kundi Collection, www.kundicollective.com. We're going to holler at you guys next time, all right? Peace and power. Peace.